when we think about artificial intelligence in healthcare, we always go to identifying diseases. However, there is an entire landscape of applications of AI in this industry, and in this video, we'll show you exactly that. Also, I will show you how ChatGPT and other generative AI tools can transform the way we think about healthcare. Hi there, I'm Calvin Fernandez, your AI advisor, and welcome to another AI show. In this one, we'll talk about healthcare and artificial intelligence. So this is an area that catches a lot of attention. We have done several projects on this area. And actually, I did my bachelor thesis and my PhD thesis both in medical imaging. So it's something that has always catch my eye, okay? And it's like a general thing, mainly because of the huge impact you can make with AI in healthcare. Not necessarily here I'm talking about monetary impact or financial impact, but actually an impact for the greater good. And that's why healthcare has gained all of this attention around AI. But when we think about most of the applications of AI in healthcare, we always go towards, you know, identifying diseases. And identifying diseases is basically when I say like patient focus or even disease focus AI, which is on the on the initial level of applications. And we will discuss here in this video three levels of uh, AI in healthcare. And by the way, if you like this video, of course, Remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And in this patient level uh, domain, most of the applications, as I said, are around identifying diseases, okay? And the main problem I see on most algorithms you see out there of AI for identifying diseases is that they are just too narrow, or if you want to compare it with deep learning, they are too shallow, okay? So they are too specific for a given disease. Sometimes it's not just for a given disease, but for a given disease, I'm going to be giving a stage for, for example, try and find this disease on triage or screening or diagnosis, you know, or for a subsegment of the population. Sometimes it's even only on one device. So these AI models only work for this device manufacturer. Or, you know, sometimes for a given type of population segment. So it's they're just too narrow, okay? And that's my main concern with this kind of application. And I think the main challenge we have to tackle as AI practitioners is building more horizontal AI applications that can detect diseases across modalities, multiple diseases and across modalities. I, I, I think that's the, the biggest challenge we have now as, as AI experts, okay? But there are other applications here around the patient, okay? And the second one is, you know, getting better data, okay? And I will put here better data, which is basically identifying the data quality and more than identifying it, promoting better data quality. So while the doctor, while well, the medical staff are taking the images, suggesting some changes so they can improve overall the overall outcomes. And improving the data in the end will always improve the diagnosis because you have a more reliable source to discuss with your peers what's going on here with the patients, okay? But there is another, a third level here, which is uh, identifying the best treatment. Okay, and identifying the best treatment is actually personalizing AI, okay? And here is like a huge opportunity of not just following protocols that are designed for the regular intervals or the normal intervals, but specifically tailored for this individual uh, user, okay? And I think these are, the, these are the three main applications at the patient level. Now with generative AI, actually there is a full new era on AI in healthcare. I don't know if you have read the news, but recently, like ChatGPT passed the US medical exam. Okay, so it, um, this is mainly because you know it has access to a vast amount of data and it's quite good on pattern matching, not necessarily because it has uh, a, a superior knowledge uh, about everything. It's just because, you know, it has a, ma a major access to this data. And most of these exams are about, you know, memorizing stuff. And actually, most of the work that doctors have to do now is memorizing patterns, so I'm memorizing and identifying patterns so they can quickly diagnose patients. That's most of the job. And if you have read this book, uh, it's a major recommendation for you if you're working on AI in medicine, Deep Medicine by Eric Tobble. Um, you will know that, you know, yes, the profession of medicine of, of doctors now is mainly pattern matching and identifying diseases, so symptom to disease. But healthcare has two parts, right? It has health and also has care. And the caring part has been compromised 
in order to reach you know universal access to healthcare okay so what this book brings is that by using ai we can be more efficient as doctors we can you know, spend less time on identifying the diseases and more times caring about the patient and there's actually an, a nice outcome uh, from, uh, from certain research uh, recently i will leave uh, the link on the description where you know they could be a certain uh, a research group compare um, the answers given to certain questions uh, by a physician and by the chat gpt okay and in the end actually chat gpt responses were rated as better answers more accurate than the quality of the physicians so it says like chatbot responses were rated of significantly higher quality than physician responses and actually this was 3.6 times higher prevalence of good or very good quality responses for the chatbot so the chatbot was 3.6 times more accurate than a human doctor okay so it's quite uh, quite a news right but also it's not just that it was more accurate but also it was more empathetic and this is a part that is more concerning okay chatbot responses were also rated significantly more empathetic than fish physician responses this amounted to 9.8 times so almost 10 times higher prevalence of empathetic or very empathetic responses for the channel. Of course, maybe it was not a fair test. We are, in this case, we were comparing Reddit responses, but I guess you have been on a medical consultation room and you felt like the doctor was always interacting with the computer and not that much about how you feel, okay? And actually, what in the deep medicine Eric Topol brings us is like, maybe AI and the way we are now interacting with machines in a much more efficient way and the way AI can faster can make faster the process of diagnosing the patients will bring again the care component to healthcare okay and here of course it's not necessarily AI versus doctor who is better but AI plus doctors so if we combine the two if we empower doctors with AI can we actually get faster diagnosis more accurate but also more empathetic outcomes with higher engagement from the end patient which will bring again the relationship much more human with higher of course engagement and higher uh, and better better re responses in the in the long run okay but i mean as i said before this is only the first level of ai application there are other two levels the second level here is hospitals okay and by hospitals i don't necessarily mean massive hospitals okay it can be small facilities like daycare etc so like it doesn't have to be like uh, actually a hospital, but the whole infrastructure to provide uh, healthcare. Okay, and most of the applications here in, uh, about hospitals are about resource management. Okay, stuff such as you know uh, forecasting demand for a certain type of medicine for a certain type of treatment, so we can get prepared for it. Such as you know correcting errors on billings, which is quite common, especially when you are dealing with claims or insurance claims so this is a quite common issue um but in the end it's about you know I, I will say about removing bottlenecks from the moment the patient has arrived to the hospital until the moment that the patient goes to, to their home okay so it's basically it's released so um removing any potential bottle operational bottleneck that you can have here is the main uh, is the focus of the main applications of ai in, in hospitals okay you can see here stuff such as you know predicting no shows so who is not coming to the appointment so we can try to promote them to come so we don't have the doctor there either uh, without you know actually using those resources you can see here you know like optimizing uh, schedules for the operating blocks etc. so there are a lot of applications around optimizing uh, hospitals okay the main problem that i see here at with ai and hospitals is that there is like a couple of conflicting um, objectives so on one end we want to make hospitals more efficient on the other end we want to make them more human right more, so we want to make the relationship uh, better for for the patient so we have two conflicting goals and it's not, sometimes it's not easy to make to, to to optimize one of them and the third level is society okay what is society it's everything around public health okay and what is public health basic, basically identifying issues not at a patient level but at a macro level like trends on the flu you know forecasting trends on the flu epidemics like 
discovering drugs, okay, which is more linked to pharma than to healthcare, to the actual process of, of providing healthcare. But it's also relevant here. So everything that is at a macro level, um, drug discovery, um, epidemics, etc. It's a potential application of AI to healthcare. Okay, and here. I like to think about these three levels as a tree. I have this metaphor, metaphor that you know society is like the roots of the tree. Okay, then the hospitals are like the trunk. Okay, and then the patient level are basically the branches and the leaves. And here is where the AI interacts with with us. Okay, that live around the tree, most of us. Okay, and but when I built this metaphor some years ago. I didn't realize something, and that it's that this tree is not here alone. This tree lives on a certain soil, okay? And the soil is actually the most important component here uh, for AI applications in healthcare, in healthcare, and soil is prevention. And it's not myself that I forgot about this. I think that it's like a common pattern that now when we think about healthcare, we think about the act of you know being sick and getting healthy again, but most of healthcare is about prevention. So how can we make AI to improve our lifestyle? How can we make AI to improve our habits here? Here I'm talking about nutrition. Here we are, I'm talking about exercising. I'm talking about mental health um, and all of these potential, you know, um, risk factors that lead to certain diseases, okay? So I hope you like this video. Remember to like and subscribe. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.